Welcome to the homework for lesson one. This is module seven of third grade. Good time to get your name on here first so you don't forget it later. Max's family takes the train to visit the city zoo. Use the RDW process, that's read, draw, write. To solve problems about Max's trip to the zoo, use a letter to represent the unknown in each problem. The sign below shows information about the train schedule into the city. And this is the train fare, one way, one way trip, adults $8, chi children $6, and the train leaves every 15 minutes starting at 6 in the morning, 6 a.m. Max's family buys two adult tickets and two child tickets. How much does it cost Max's family to take the train into the city? So we need two adults, three children, and we have the information right up there. So we read it. And now draw. Our picture is going to be a tape diagram. So we need two adult tickets. That's going to be an adult ticket, which is eight. Now, maybe you could do this in your head without drawing the picture, but you still have to draw the picture. Three children. Make those a little bit shorter than the eights. We're looking for a total here, so this is going to be the cost. I'll call it C. You can pick. You don't have to pick C. So now I've drawn it. That's my picture, and now I'm going to write an equation and then write my answer statement. Now I can either write this as multiplication or addition. I'm just going to write this all addition. And then now my solution Three sixes I see here, that's 18. And then these two eights make a 16. And two 16s would be 32. And the 18 is two more, so it's going to be 34. And it's dollars. cost Max's family $34 for the train. Max's father pays the tickets with $10 bills. That's not $10 bills, but with tens. He receives $6 in change. How many $10 bills does Max's father use to pay for the train tickets? So, we have picture is going to be looks going to look it's going to be a tape diagram now your tape diagrams don't have to look exactly like mine there's a lot of different ways you can draw these with tape diagrams but this is just the way I thought of doing it so 
we know this is what Max's father paid. We know he paid $34. Now, just um, I want to mention something about change. Some third graders know this, some don't. A lot don't. Um, this is in this uh, cash transaction. This is where we know the 34, the change is the extra money that you pay. So he only has 10, so he can pay $10, $20, $30, $40, $50. But that's all he can pay is in, is in, is in increments of 10 because he has $10 bills. So he's paying in 10s. He's going to pay, and it's 34. 34 is not a multiple of 10. So he's going to pay a little bit more than he had. He can't pay 30. So he has to pay 40 and he's paying too much. And the change is how much he, the difference between the 40 that he's going to pay and what he's going to, and what he actually, the 34 that he owes for the train and the 40 that he gives the, uh, the cashier, the cashier has to give him back the difference between what he's supposed to pay and what he actually gave him. So that's the 34 that, the train ride costs plus the six dollars in change that's what change means in this story so these two things put together will tell us how many tens he needs so this whole thing here is forty dollars that's what he gives the cashier the equation we're gonna write is let's check T for the number of tens T is number of tens times ten equals forty and you can see there T is gonna be four tens ten twenty thirty forty Max's is father uses four tens. Max's family wants to take the fourth train of the day. It's 6.38 a.m. now. How many minutes do they have to wait for the fourth train? So that's where we have to look at the train leaves every 15 minutes starting at 6 a.m. So it's drawing a timeline. Remember those? Starting at what time does the train start? 6 a.m. It's kind of a crooked timeline but it'll still work. And we need we don't need to mark every single minute in here and we don't even have to go to 7 o'clock but we need 15 minute increments, right? Or intervals. So every 15 minutes, so six o'clock, and then that's when the first train leaves. That's train one. And then at 6.15, that's where the second train leaves. And then 6.30 is when the third train leaves. But the it's 6.38, so those trains have already left. 6.45, that's when the fourth train leaves. So that's the one they're going to catch, because that's the that's at 6.45 is after 6.38. So they're going to leave. This is the time they have now on the timeline. That's 6.38. So we have to find the time between 6.38 and 6.45. So from 38 to 45, so we need minutes. How many minutes? M equals the 45 
minus 38. They have to wait seven minutes. Now you have to have a picture. Timeline's really the best kind of picture you can have for this. And then uh, you gotta have an equation. You gotta use the letter for the unknown and you have to have your answer statement. You have to have all those things. They don't have to be exactly like mine, but you have to have those things. At the city zoo, they see 17 young bats and 19 adult bats. The bats are placed equally into four areas. How many bats are in each area? You could think of this as a two-step problem because it doesn't really matter how many, um, what kind of bats there are. It just matters how many. So once, and then you have to put them into into uh, four equal groups. But you could do it in just one. So what you could draw a tape diagram. Adding the 17 and the 19 together. And then divide that by 4. And that could be your equation. Or you could do it in one step. And that's how most people do it. Or you can do it the way I'm going to do it, which is in one step. And this is going to be really just, there's 17 young bat right here. There's the four equal areas, right? So this, I'm going to make tally marks, and that's going to equal one bat. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, oops, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. That's the 17 young bats. Now I need 19 more. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 16, 17, 18, 19. And now we have four groups with an equal number of bats in each group. And I'm just going to label this too for one group. And you can just count. Five and four more. Here's our equation. Five plus four. Right, because there's that five group here. You have to write an equation. So five plus four equals nine. Is Well, is going to be uh, our number of bats, right? B for bats. There are. And then B equals nine. So sometimes, depending on the picture you choose to draw, uh, you, you can skip one of the two steps that other people might have to do if they draw a different picture. And sometimes those math pictures, like the one I just drew, sometimes those pictures are they're easier to think of. Max's father gives the cashier $20 to pay for six water bottles. The cashier gives him $8 and change. How much does each water bottle cost? Now, most um, normally this would be thought of as a two-step problem again. And what you do is you would subtract because we have another change problem, right? So it's we have to figure out, you'd figure out what was paid first by subtracting 
the eight dollars and change from the twenty because that's what he had to he had to pay and then six is the difference between what he gave him the twenty dollar bill and what he got back so you could do that subtraction figure out what that is and then uh, divide by six or and then that would be the two steps because first you have to do this you have to do the subtraction and then you have to do the division but you could do this really if you just draw the picture you could do it and that's how most people would do it but I'm just gonna draw I think this way is just gonna make more sense one two three four five six and now each of these is one bottle and then we have uh, that's one bottle now we have eight dollars and change right so that means we're gonna start at eight and then count from, count up from eight to twenty nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty they're two dollars our equation we don't even really need do we because we're just looking at it it's two so t uh, or we want maybe T isn't a great one there but it really could be any letter right so this is uh, cost for each water bottle so C for cost C equals two dollars The zoo has 112 types of reptiles and amphibians in their exhibits. There are 72 types of reptiles and the rest are amphibians. How many more types of reptiles are there than amphibians in the exhibits? So the, now that's reading it, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to summarize it too because a lot of times you read it, it just doesn't like huh what am I supposed to do and what works for me is to try to summarize the this little two sentence story so we've got a zoo with lots of reptiles and amphibians we know how many reptiles there are but we don't know how many amphibians there are but we do know the total how many more types and we want to find the difference between reptiles and amphibians. So the, the usual way to do this, and that's the way I'm going to do it this time, is just for variety, the sake of variety, is we have our 112. This would be a two-step problem because first we have to figure out how many amphibians there are and then compare the amphibians to the reptiles. And then we'll be able to know the difference between the two. So first we have to figure out how many amphibians there are. And now it's, so there's a tape diagram for that. There's a total, we have 72 reptiles, and the amphibians we don't know, A, and the total of those together is 112. Now that A kind of looks like a 9, so I'm going to change it to a capital A there. So... 112 minus 72 equals A. And you could use vertical subtraction for this, but I'm, I'm looking at this. You could do this. And you'll see right away, you probably could have done this mentally because you can get rid of the ones right away because 
it's really thinking of 11 minus 7 and 10, which is 40. So 2 minus 2 is 0. And then 11 minus 7, this is uh, 1 minus 7. You can't do that in 10, so you have to break up this 100. You're not going to have any 100s left. And now we're going to have 11 tens. So 11 minus 7 is 4. So you really could have done that mentally. A equals 40 amphibians. I like to label my numbers like this in my steps because that way I don't lose track of what the numbers represent. And that helps me remember what I'm supposed to do next. Uh, so that's 40 amphibians, and now I have to figure out the difference between the amphibians and the reptiles. So that's, if I was going to draw, you don't have to draw another tape diagram here because you already have one, but that would be the 72, these are reptiles, and these are amphibians, 40 amphibians. And this is the difference, which um, I could use another letter for that, D for difference. And the 72 minus 40, you could, you, you could do this mentally, really, because if you think 70 minus 40 would be a lot easier, right? So 70 minus 40 would be 30, and then just add the 2 back in, 32. Or if you do it vertically, you'll see what happens. 2 minus 0 is 2, and 7 minus 4 is 3, 32. There are 32 more reptiles reptile types.